Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today we're going to be looking at the new feature in 2021.1 which is the game rule, game rule option. We'll be taking a look at the procedures and how to make a game rule, what the different settings are, and uh, just basically general use in game on how to use them. So let's uh, get started after the intro. Okay, so we are in a, I guess an island, uh, it's not really a huge map here, but uh, yeah, so we're right here, we're just in a new world. If we break a block, as you can see, we can break it in creative or survival and nothing really changes too much. Uh, there is a game rule that I added, which is if we type slash game rule and then there should be a new game rule added when you add a new game rule type uh, element. So I created one called break explosion. And what this will do is, if I set this to true, is it will basically do damage to blocks every time a block is broken. So in our case, I can break any block in the game and it will explode with power of six. So we could do that anywhere in the world and it will basically explode like you would imagine it would. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And to disable it, you just need to set this to false and then it will go back to being able to break like normal. So obviously you need commands in order to do basically uh, set that up. But uh, I think in 1.16, if I recall correctly, if we create a new world, uh, there is an option right here which should allow us to control if the breaking explosion is enabled or disabled. So we could actually create a new world with it already enabled if you wanted to. So outside of that, let's hop into mCreator and I'll show you the actual procedure as well as the um, new procedure elements that are have been added in this uh, particular update and the settings that you need to know about for the block or the game rule setting element itself. So let's go into mCreator. Okay, pretty straightforward. We got a breaking explosion element for the game roll and we got the breaking explosion element for the actual procedure for the script. So we'll take a look at the element first and I'll cover how everything works. So the machine name or yeah machine name is basically the uh, actual script that will be used to basically enable it to true or false or whatever value you want. So this is the actual name that you type in when you're using the command. The game rule name is basically the setting in the uh, game rules uh, settings screen. So when we went into the game rule settings, it basically said game rule. This is only for uh, 1.16, I think, because it wasn't in 1.15. So this is only for 1.16 mostly. And this is also the description for the game rule uh, in the screen as well. So these two things are for 1.16. And then what we have is the category. So this is basically where this basically falls under. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see what it says here. It says uh, classification of the game rule. Uh, depending on what they do. So um, this would be basically the category of the game rule uh, screen. So as you saw in the game rule screen, there's a whole bunch of different tabs and stuff like that. Um, those would be the different types of categories for the game rules. So in our case, it would probably fit better under um, miscellaneous because it would it has to do with block breaking and stuff like that although updates might work as well uh, the game rule type uh, so this is basically a value between true or 
true or false, which is logic, or a number which is basically a integer number. So in our case, uh, number would be anywhere from one, two, three, four, and it counts up where the logic is based on true or false settings. In our case, what I've done is just a simple enable disable setting method, which is through logic settings. And then the default value, so basically what value the settings have when it's um, not enabled. And uh, this would be the default value when you create a new world. So in our case, I have it disabled because it would probably get really annoying if the blocks were always exploding. And we could always set this to true if it's on logic. If it's on number, then we can set the default number as you would expect. So let's take a look at the procedure quickly and I'll show you a couple of the elements that are have been added that you can actually use with your procedures now. So this is basically the procedure that I have for the explosion. What I'm doing is I'm testing it for the get logic game rule and then the type of game rule and then if it's equal to true. Uh, to find these particular blocks you can actually go to world data and then you just scroll down a little bit where it says get logic game rule and then it has a uh, drop down box here and it will probably display your custom, um, custom game rule as the text box if you have created one already. If you haven't, then it'll probably just display a vanilla one. There's also get number game rule, which is for the number value one. Now, if you scroll down a little bit further, there is also two other blocks here, which you can basically use to in some of your other procedures and stuff and control what the settings are for the game rules. This can be used with custom commands and other things as well. So you can basically make it uh, expand your script a lot more than just having it uh, based on vanilla commands. So for example, set logic game rule to true and then set uh, the type and then we set our game rule type. So this basically could override the game rule and set it to true or false depending on what we want. So maybe we have a timer where we break five blocks and have died three times or something like that. We could eventually test for all that and then we could basically set this to false just to annoy people because that would be fun too. Um, then there's also the number version. So we could basically set the number based on what number we want. So that's the two different types or four different types of blocks. Now to use the logic, you would just basically use it like a regular operator. Uh, you would basically create a value like this. And for the number, what you're gonna need is a dark uh, blue operator under logic. And for the uh, actual logic one is you're gonna need a light blue operator. And then for the logic, you're also going to need to go to logic, get a true statement and you can click on that box and set it to true or false depending on what you want to test. For number though, you're going to need to grab, go under math and grab a number and set the number of what you'd like. The other blocks for those would be these ones right here. So you could basically create a system very similar to, let me find it again, <laughs> uh, similar to this. So you could basically create a test for that. Now you can also test for vanilla um, game rules as well. So it's not just specific to your game rules. You can test for other vanilla game rules as well if you wanted to. There's a whole bunch of different true or false ones as well. So you can basically do a whole bunch of different stuff, uh, not just regarding the different um, with your own uh, game rules, but you can do it with your with vanilla ones as well. So basically that's all there is to it and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.